So hi, welcome everyone uh, to the analysis seminar. And um, today for me it's a pleasure to introduce my colleague and my friend uh, Eugenia Sotseca uh, from, from, <laughs> from University of Buenos Aires. Uh, and today he's going to talk about weighted a priori estimate for elliptic equations. So thank you, Andrea. Thank you, Manuel. I'm very comfortable here working in testing. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, something that I started to study when I started my PhD like 10 years ago. And I decided to, to think another product relating to this uh, estimate. So I will uh, tell you about results in the PhD and new results. Okay? Result that we obtained with Ricardo. Ricardo was my PAD supervisor, and we still work together. And so I will show you the results we obtained during the PAD and what we obtain now that is new and it's a generalization of that result. Okay, so let's start. Uh, okay. If you should just move the ah. cursor there, maybe click with the button. Click on the video. That should be okay now. Here? Yeah. Or you should point like. No. It's not working. A la compu, the computer? Let me see. No, oh, but today it was working. It's the green light. I can use the computer. It doesn't matter. Ah. It's not uh, working the PD. Yeah. Okay, so let's start. So first I will give you an introduction of the problem, the motivation of the problem. So I will start with the easiest case that is considered the case of the Laplace. We will consider the Dirichlet problem. This problem just for the case of the Laplace, okay? And we consider for our problem because it can be considered another uh, type of domain, but we will consider a smooth domain. The regularity of the domain depends on the order of the equation. For example, for the Laplace, we can consider a domain with a boundary C3, okay? Um, so we state this problem and it is well known <clears throat> that this problem has a unique solution u that can be controlled by the norm of the data f, okay? In which norm, for example, if we take a function f in Lp for p between 1 and infinity, we can prove this weighty a priori estimate because we control the norm of the solution in terms of the data f, okay? Um, this was, sh was shown by a classical work by Agmon Douglas and Nidenberg, okay? And in fact, they consider general elliptic operator, uniform elliptic operator. I just want to introduce for the simplest case. So. Well, this is an inequality with the constant in front, right? Uh, it's yes. not with constant I No, no, it's a constant, but I forgot to write the constant. It depends on the domain. Yes, yes, it depends on the domain, of course, and the, and the dimension. Okay, it can be, it depends on that constant, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, now, so from this equation, from this problem, from this estimate, we have several problems that can be solved or not, we will see. Uh, for example, I introduced the case of the Laplace, okay? So as I said before, it can be considered another uh, operators that are elliptic operators. I will give you the form of that operator and what um, uh, what are needed uh, for the operator to sanctify the weight the a priori estimate. But first, I want to tell you in general what are the problems related to this problem, and then I will talk uh, about this in more detail. Okay? So this problem can be extended by for more general operators. Um, uniform elliptic operator, a particular case is negative Laplace. Uh, this was also uh, done by Agnon Duris and Nidenberg. In fact, they consider this operator. I just write the case of the Laplace, but they consider this type of operators. I will uh, show you how they are later. 
And when we say an operator, it means a, a elliptic operator, we are talking about an operator uh, involving differential operator, it means derivative of a function of certain orders, and we multiply this operator, differential operator, by coefficient, by functions that has certain properties, okay? So in the case that I will show you later, the coefficient are smooth, okay? So we can ask if it can be extended for a bigger class of coefficients, okay? I will show you in detail this later, okay? I want just to uh, state general ideas, okay? So um, we can extend that for coefficient in a bigger class, and another uh, problem that can be considered is what happens if we consider less regularity of the domain? Okay, I say that for the case of the Laplacian because it depends on the order of the operator. If I consider derivative of order two or two m, so um, what happens if we want to consider less regularity? Okay, there are some results for polygonal and convex domains. For example, for the case of the Laplacian, I don't know too much about this because I'm not working in, on this problem, but it's another possible problem to study for this type of operators. And another problem possible that it was the one I studied during my PhD is to consider another norms. I consider in last um, year, we say F, in LP, for example. Okay, so what happens if we consider another Lebesgue spaces? Which kind of Lebesgue spaces with weighted Lebesgue norms? I will give the definition of that norms in a couple of slides. And that's the problem we can solve. Okay, here are some typos here. I'm doing. And another problem that arises is what happens if P is equal to one? Because I say that the data F was in LP for P between one and infinity. What happens if P is equal to one, okay? Which is a su suitable subspace of L1 because in L1 it is well known that that problem does not hold, okay? We don't have the solution and the a priori estimate, okay? So, we are already working on that problem. I will say uh, something else at the end of the talk. So I want to start to uh, give more details about this uh, problem I mentioned here. So as I say, we will consider the problem of another norms, okay? We consider F in LP. Now we want to consider the data F in weighted Lebesgue spaces. What we mean with weighted Lebesgue space is we consider this norm, okay? We consider this norm, and what is W? W is a wave. What is a wave? A measurable, a measurable and positive uh, function, almost everywhere positive function, okay? So we will consider this type of norms, okay? Now, the special case we will consider is for marking how weight because a lot of theory uh, of harmonic analysis is extended from Lebesgue spaces to a weighted Lebesgue spaces for marking how weight. So many results of harmonic analysis can be extended for the weighted setting. Okay, so we consider a marking how weight. So we remind for those who doesn't know the definition. We recall what is a weight in AP. If the supremium is uh, finite and the supremium is taking over all cubes in RF, okay? So we will consider this type of weight. Now, an example of a, of a marking how weight, AP marking how weight, Classical example are the power weights, and the range of the power is depends on the uh, number p, okay, of the order p. So 
So why we consider this problem? I didn't decide this because my supervisor proposed me this when I decided to, to start my PhD. But since he works also in numerical analysis, he knows that this kind of estimate has application to finite element method, okay? When we want to um, approximate a solution of some elliptic equations, we consider a triangulation of the domain and we approximate solution in each triangle, triangle of the domain. And the approximation are, are for example, uh, polynomials in each triangle. And we want to know if that, that approximation is good or not. Uh, what about the stability of that uh, approximation? And the idea is that sometimes the, when you take some data um, for solving an equation, the data <coughs> is not in LP, but it is in LPW, and you can prove using that the data is there, you can use uh, to prove that um, the, the approximate solution has a good conversion to the, the original solution. Okay, so it can have application. The a priori estimate, in fact, the a priori estimate that are used are uh, estimate for first order derivative. They are not, not, not need the estimate for a derivative of second order, okay? So it has application. So let's stay with details the problem. So I say, we consider omega a bounded domain. We consider this problem. Now L is a general operator and the operator is just for simplicity, we will consider a further two, but this I will tell you today can be done for uh, another order, any order 2M. And the operator is of this form, okay? We have, we consider derivative of order two multiplied by certain coefficients that are functions that are sometimes has some regularity. For example, in the case that we study at the beginning, we consider coefficient uh, in situ, okay? And for being elliptic, the operator, we need some properties of the coefficient. So the properties for being uniform elliptic are this condition, okay? In the sense of Armand Douglas and Miriam, this is a standard. And of course, the example, typical example is negative Laplace, okay? <laughs> So, as I said, the regularity of the coefficients in order to solve this problem and obtain a, a priori estimate depends on the order of the operator, okay? So, we will consider just the case of a order two, okay? So, a, this problem was solved by Agmon Douglas in Nirenberg. They represent the solution in terms of a Calderon Sigmund uh, something similar to a calderon sigmund singular integral operator. And using that theory, they show this estimate, okay? So they represent the solution in terms of operators, and then using the, this representation formula, they obtain a representation formula for the second order derivative. I say second order because the operator is of order two. If the operator is 2m, the most important thing to estimate is the, deri the derivative of order 2m, okay? So what we did with Ricardo, we consider this problem in the weighted setting for weights in AP, okay? We consider the same problem and we uh, try to extend to the weighted norms, okay? So I will show you, I will mention what is the technique to obtain this extension, okay? I want to, I won't mention a lot of results because I want to show you how is the connection between PDEs and harmonic analysis, how we use the techniques of <laughs> harmonic analysis to obtain some results result of PDEs, okay? So I will mention the ideas <laughs> of any result I will state today, okay? so. 
we obtain this estimate for the same problem, the, the same operator, the same regularity of the coefficients, the smooth is the same, but uh, now we consider a weight that is in the Mackenhaup class AP. Okay, so what's the idea to obtain this estimate? So for the case of a smooth domain, it is well known that a solution, the solution of uh, the equation I introduced before, <coughs> can be written by this operator. With what is G? G is the green function associated to the equation. Okay, it depends on the domain, of course. Okay, and the function has the function G and it's some derivative of the function G has point-wide estimate that of course depends on the operator and depends on the domain. And we can consider a smooth function here, know that it says F in C zero infinity, it means the, inf uh, the function with infinite derivatives and compact support. So why we can consider this? Because these functions are dense also in LP and LPW. So then we can use an a density argument to extend uh, for any function f in LPW. Okay, so we can, if it's necessary, we consider this kind of functions. So using this representation of u, uh, we can obtain we can yes we can obtain two inequalities that are very useful to obtain weighty a priori estimate it's not just the representation you need to use the representation to obtain second order derivatives of the solution okay so using the representation i will show you later how is the expression for the second derivative of u it, of course, it's in terms of the green function, the second order derivative of the green function, but using that representation, one can uh, obtain two inequalities. One, one is a point-wise inequality and the other is a weighted norm inequality to prove the weighty a priori estimate. And it's also needed to prove the weighty a priori estimate, the unweighted case, okay? Maybe it won't be clear how we, we use the unweighted case because it's very technical and we have to make many calculations, but I give you the general idea. So the first inequality <clears throat> is this point-wise inequality between, I will give you the, the definition now, <coughs> uh, between the sharp maximal function of the operator. This is the sharp maximal function. I will write here the the definition, uh, the sharp maximal function of an operator G, okay, is uh, controlled by the maximal function, hardly literal maximal function of a function to the power S, everything to the power one over S for any S greater than zero, okay? But what is T? What is T? T is any calderon sigmund operator which is represent in this form, okay, where the kernel K satisfies some properties, the standard properties of Calderon singular, singular integral operator, the control of the size of the kernel. And what is the sharp maximal function? It means that the function uh, consider this sharp maximal function where is the here? This sharp maximal function consider the supremum over the oscillations of the of a function f over cubes. And the hardy little maximal operator consider supremum over mean value of the module of f. Okay, so what how is this related to what I was saying about weighty a priori estimate? This estimate it is well known that is used to prove boundedness of this type of operator in weighted norms, okay? One, using this inequality can prove that these operators are bounded in LPW for W in AP, okay? 
okay? And how we are going to relate this to weighted a purely estimate, because it can be proved, I will show you in the next, I, I think in one or two more slides, that here we can substitute in, in, instead of TDF, the second order derivative of U, okay? Then we will see why this estimate is important to obtain weighted a priori estimate. But this inequality can be extended, replacing here the data, here the data F, and here the second order derivative of U, okay, of the solution U. So this is the first key inequality, a points weight inequality. The other is a weighted norm, uh, sorry, not the weight. Yes, we will consider the weight. Ah, first, I'm sorry. First, I will show you the how it's written, the point-wise inequality in terms of the case of considering here uh, the second order derivative of u. And here, note that here it says omega instead of any cube in Rn. It means that when we consider the oscillation, we see the oscillation over cubes, we will consider just cubes in omega, okay? So this can be proved, okay? This can be proved. Of course, I don't, I don't give the proof of this estimate, but this can be proved, okay? The extension of the inequality, the point one inequality for any calderon simon operator can be extended for second order derivative um, of the solution. Why? Because the solution can be expressed in terms of some operator that has good point one inequality. And due to this uh, point one inequality, we can generalize the uh, point one <laughs> estimate. So next, the second key inequality is the Pfeffer-Manstein inequality that is well known for the case of omega equal to Rn. So the norm of f, of a function f, in the case of Rn, we consider just f, is controlled by the sharp maximal function. That is the case, uh, I will write it here. So for the case of Rn, it is well known that we can control the norm constant in terms of the norm of the sharp maximal function, okay? In the case of Rn. This was proved by Pfefferman and Stein, that what is why, why we call Pfefferman Stein inequality. So we give a local version of that and a weighted case of that inequality because here is in our end. Okay, sorry. This is in our end. So it can be extended to domains considering weights in the domain omega and we can prove for weighted norms. The idea, of course, to prove this is based on the case of Rn, but we have to make a lot of technical details. But the idea is, is similar. So we can obtain this inequality. F omega, it means the average of F over omega. So how we use these two inequalities to prove a um, weighty a priori estimate? So let's show you that if we substitute <coughs> here, the, we need to bound second order derivative in LPW omega, but we can consider subtracting the average of F, Can consider this, and th then this can be bound. So it's no problem if we bound uh, this difference because this can be controlled, and then we can bound just this term. So 
how we can apply last two estimate. So we can bound by the Pfefferman time, we can write here uh, the sharp maximal, the local sharp maximal of the second order derivative of u. And then we can apply the point wide estimate. So we can write here, let's go back to the point wide estimate. Where is it? Here. Then we can apply the point wide estimate. So I can here write M of the data F one over S LPW. Here is omega. Okay. So what we, in fact, we can write R, it doesn't matter because the support. We can extend the function by zero upside omega and there is no problem. What happened here? We have that the operator M, that is the hard little maximal function. Let me show you, it's bounded in LP for any P. But here we don't have the norm in LP. This is like the norm. This is like the norm. LP over S to the power here, we have to write one over P. No, no, it's okay. This is like this norm, P over S, okay? So it is well known that the maximal operator M, it's bounded in LP for W in AP. For the same P, we have P here, we have to write a weight in AP here. But here we have the norm LP over S, W. And we know that W as hypothesis, because we want to prove weighty a priori estimate for weights in AP, we have W in AP. What, how can we solve here and use the powderness? According to some properties of the mapping how weights here of the mapping how weight, it's it is well known that if a weight is in AP, it can be in a small AP. That is, W is in AP over S for sub S greater than one. Okay, but the sharp. Uh, the sharp inequality, the point wise sharp inequality, it holds for any s greater than zero, any s greater than zero. So we can choose the s for which w is in AP over s. We can choose that s, <coughs> and we have the boundedness here. So we have the boundedness here. Write this here over, it's always constant dependent on the weight. Here I forgot the weight, I'm sorry. So here we obtain the LPW norm of F. So we can bound the second order derivative of U minus the average of the second order derivative by the um, weighted norm of the data f. Okay, so in order to, I won't make all the calculations, just saying that this one can subtract the average here. It's okay. Here we write the average. And this term can be bounded, writing the definition and using a held inequality and using property of weight. So in conclusion, we can obtain the weighty a priori estimate using uh, these two inequalities. So I say that 
I wanted to show you how is the expression of the second order derivative that allow us to obtain the two inequalities, the pointwise and the uh, Pfefferman, the local Pfefferman style inequality. So the second order derivative has this representation in terms of the second derivative of uh, the wind function associated to the problem. And here, this is a bounded function. So this part of the operator is not problem. It is enough to bound this, okay? In order to obtain weighty a priori estimate, this is trivial because this is a bounded function. And so it's enough to consider this operator and obtain the, obtaining estimate for this operator, okay? So since this uh, kernel, the second order derivative of the green function is similar to a singular integral uh, operator, it has good, good estimate that can be used to prove the sharp the point by inequality between a sharp maximal function and the hardly little maximal operator. Okay, so that's the idea. And uh, as I said before, the local version of performance time inequality in weighted not can be extended, but it's, it is not trivial. I mean, the idea is similar, but it, it is not trivial, okay? And also I say that this can be extended for operator of order 2M, okay? I consider just for simplicity of the notation, I consider the case of order two, okay? Now, what's the problem we consider now, okay? That it's a part that we did during my PhD, and next, a couple of, of years ago, we um, consider the case of another type of coefficient, because then we consider a smooth coefficient. What happens if we want to consider a biggest class that, of course, contain the smooth coefficient, but all coefficients, they are not necessarily smooth, okay? So, which is a suitable class? So, to, to answer this question, we consider a work by Chiarenza, Frasta, and Longo that consider the class of vanishing mean oscillation. I will give the definition later. So we will consider if this class is suitable or not for our case of considering weighted norms, okay? So we will see if this is um, suitable or not, okay? The ideas, the ideas to show this um, is different than the, the ideas I present here, okay? Because since we will consider a non-necessary smooth coefficient, all the estimate for the green function, um, for example, we have the representation of, in terms of this kernel. And we have estimate that depends, point by estimate that depends on the, of course, on the operator. It depends because this green function is associated to the operator. So if the coefficients are not smooth, we don't have the same estimate. Okay? <laughs> so we can use, we cannot, at the moment, we, we cannot use these uh, ideas. Okay? So we will use some standard method of PDEs to extend it for the, um, the vanishing mean oscillation coefficient, okay? So we will define what is this space of vanishing mean oscillation function. So first we need to define what is a bounded mean oscillation function. That is that the sharp maximal function is in L infinity. <coughs> what does it mean that the, um, the oscillations are bounded? Okay, all the oscillation for all cubes in Rn are bounded, okay? And uh, for the case of a function in, of bounded, bounded mean oscillation, we will consider the oscillation, but for a small balls, okay? For a small balls. And we will see that, we will see now, I'm sorry, we will require for a function to be in the vanishing mean oscillation space is that the oscillations tends to zero according to the balls, the radius of the balls tends to zero, okay? 
So, bounded mean oscillation, the oscillation bounded, and vanishing mean oscillation, the oscillation vanishing when the balls, uh, the radius of the balls tends to zero. Okay? So, we will consider the vanishing mean oscillation for the coefficient of our um, operator, our, of our equation. So, we will state the main result. So we consider an operator of this type where now the operators are in the class of vanishing mean oscillation. We will consider also a weight in AP. The domain is still smooth because, as I say, I, we won't consider the case of non-smooth domains. We just work with this class of domains. And so this problem for a data F in LP has a solution, U, that satisfies a, the following weighty a priori estimate, this one, okay? So this is the solvability and the estimate. And there is another result that we can state that this, that the solution is unique. If the solution, um, if uh, we consider F equal to zero, and we have the operator in a function u is equal to zero, then the solution must be zero. We will define what means zero here, okay? And for a weight in AP and P, it is important to note that P is between uh, one and infinity because this theory of singular integral or similar to singular integral does not hold for P equal to one. We don't have boundedness of the operators, okay? So, we will consider the sobble F phases, the weighted sobble F phases. Um, I won't give the definition before. The derivative are in LPW. And when we denote zero here, it means the closure of the C infinity function with compact support. And the closure is considered in this space, okay? According to this space. So, how I won't give the detail of the proof, but I want to mention how we use the technique of harmonic analysis to obtain a result of PDs. Okay, because I, I like from these topics, I like how we mix both areas. Okay, so the idea this is very standard in PDs. What I want to mention is not my idea. So what first make the proof of the estimate for the case of a semi ball. One, it is important to consider a semi ball because the idea is one, when one consider a domain omega, a domain omega, the idea is to transform a neighborhood of the boundary in terms of a semi ball. Okay, and use that when we transform and we use diffeomorphisms to transform the neighborhood of the boundary, this type of diffeomorphisms to transform the, the neighborhood of the boundary um, makes that all the norms are equivalent, the weight uh, in AP are um, invariant by this transformation. So the idea in general is this, to consider first a semi ball because we, we will obtain interior estimate, in, estimate inside the domain, and when we are close to the boundary of the domain, we consider a transformation here, a diffeomorphisms in a semi ball, use the result well known in the semi ball, and when we go back to the original norm, they are equivalent by this transformation. Okay, so one can make a covering of the domain. If it's inside, we can consider balls inside. If we are close to the boundary, we will transform in semi walls. Okay, so the idea is to prove in semi walls. Don't be afraid <laughs> about this integral, it doesn't matter. What I want to say is that the function u has a representation. Okay, it doesn't matter how it has a representation in terms of operators. Okay, that has good property. And here, what I want to see is that. This difference is important because since the function is in the functions are in vanishing mean oscillation, this can be controlled. These operators are bounded. Okay. 
it doesn't matter. This is like I forget it. So we have to prove for the semi ball, okay? We have to prove for a semi ball. I don't have time to make the proof, but we have to consider the case of semi balls. So as I say, we consider to prove interior estimate, okay, and near the boundary by making a, a, a transformation of the domain into a semi ball. So we can prove this, this estimate, okay. But here we have this term. We want to obtain the control of the second order derivative in terms of the data. And we have here this term that we have to see how can be eliminated, okay? So one can prove first integer and near the boundary. And uh, using these two estimates, making a covering of the domain, one can prove this kind of estimate, okay? But here we still have this term that we need to see how to eliminate. Now, this part I, I said before that we transform the neighborhood of a boundary into a semi ball. And so the, the um, operator, the original operator where we transform uh, the domain, of course, it changed the equation. And the equation has its forms and the coefficients b. Uh, yj are of the same type of the aj of the original equation. We have one equation and when we transform, it appears a new equation. The important here is that it's of the same type, okay? The coefficient, it can be proved that the coefficients are also in the vanishing mean oscillation, okay? So if the coefficients are in vanishing mean oscillation, we can consider the case of the balls because here, when we prove interior estimate, here it must say uh, instead of semi ball, we can put here ball. So when we make this um, diffeomorphisms, the coefficients are still in vanishing mean oscillation. The transformed data, this is the transformed data, is also in LPW, but not W, the transforms way. Let me show you this. So we transform the equation, the new equations, are, uh, the new coefficients are still in vanishing mean oscillation. The AP class is invariant under diffeomorphism, so the weight transforms is in AP. The weighted norm of the solution B and U are equivalent. And for the result of the, <coughs> it says one that is the case of the semi ball, but the case of semi ball is similar to the case of the ball. Um, one can make a covering of the domain to obtain the estimate I showed you before with the terms. Let me go back. We can obtain this estimate by making the covering. This is just what I said before, but I don't follow the order of, of the slides. And so we can obtain by using near the boundary and interior estimate and making a covering. Okay, and it is important that we obtain a equivalent a norms that by using that this weight is also the transform weight is also in AP. Okay, um, for proving uniqueness is um, necessary to use the Pucci Alexandrov maximum principle that is well known in PDEs. We have this inequality for a solution of. Uh, this equation, the U in this space, in this double space, and of course it holds the opposite with the infimum. So one can use this maximum principle to prove the unit of our problem. How it is necessary to? It don't, don't follow this um, this uh, calculation, but the idea is to reduce the weighted case to a, the unweighted case, okay? So it can be proved that um, the solution, if it is here, I don't know if you notice that it says, let me show you, here it says the following. 
if we know that u is in some sublet for some q and the f is in LPW, then we have that for any p greater or equal than q, we have this estimate. Okay? So we are going to apply that in order to obtain that we can choose a, a q here greater than p. Here p plays the role of q in the inequality I showed you before. And here p plays the, the role of q. So this exponent is greater than p. So according to that result, then u is in uh, this sublet x, uh, space with exponent here q. So by a Helder inequality and using property of the way, we can show that the solution is here and we can use the pucci alexandrov maximum principle. We need to show that this integral is finite. We can do by a Helder inequality and use it that um, the dual weight is in AP, is in AP prime. So this integral is finite. So we can obtain that uh, the solution must be zero. So we, the idea of this is that we reduce the, the weighted case to the unweighted case. And the last step, no, this is, yes, it's the last step. We need to prove solvability and the estimate. So we need to eliminate the, or the, the term, we need to eliminate this term in the inequality I showed you before. So the idea is a standard to prove solvability. The idea is to approximate our coefficients that they are in the vanishing mean oscillation class, but C infinity coefficient. Okay, this is well known. So for the solvability, it's enough to, to use the solvability for a smooth coefficient and approximate the solution uh, that we want to find find by solution in the smooth case. And to eliminate the lower order and obtain this estimate, it's necessary to use some properties such as the compactness of the ball in the, sobelet, in the weighted sobelet space and the compact embedding of these spaces. Of course, it's very technical, but the idea is to suppose, to, to suppose that this inequality does not hold. So we have the opposite inequality. It means that there is a sequence of operators uh, of the set up of L and a sequence of function in the sublet space such that we can consider that the norm is one and this is zero. This is equivalent to consider that this does not hold. And one can obtain a sequence here, a subsequent here, conversion because of the compactness of the ball, a subsequent conversion in the weak sense, weekly. And since the compact embedding, this compact embedding, uh, this converge strong, UM converge to U strong, but in W1P, W, in W1P, because that means the compact, that the embedding is compact. And uh, the idea is to use that distance to zero, to conclude that then the, the operator uh, L in U must be zero, U is this function, and by uniqueness, the, the idea is to use uniqueness and uh, to obtain a contradiction because the norms of this must be one, so U cannot be zero, but it's not just using that, um, that contradict this because here is a sum of norm, so it does not contradict uh, immediately. One has to use this inequality we have here. Maybe it's very technical if I explain it because I already studied the, the topic because maybe, maybe it's not easy to understand it. Uh, so we need to use this inequality because if we don't use inequality, this inequality, why we prove this inequality? It's needed to use this inequality and also the uniqueness of, I'm sorry, of the problem to lead a, to a contradiction, okay? So this is a standard method to prove 
the, to eliminate the lower order of the estimate using uh, by contradiction. And I want to mention something about a uh, future work that is, um, I say something about this, that since the, the operator appearing in this representation that are singular integrals or commutator of singular integrals are not bounded in LPW, we cannot solve here this problem, but we consider a suitable subspace of uh, L1W that are the, the Hardy spaces, okay? I don't have time to tell you about that, but we are still working on, on that problem. So that's all. Thank you, Eugenia, for the nice talk. Um, mm -hmm. Is there any question or comments? So you mentioned on your last slide that you're looking for uh, potential yes. ways of exploring the subspace of L1 mm -hmm. weighted, right? Yes. But the, the original problem in the subspace of L1, just maybe with the usual hard space, has already been considered, I, I assume, no? Yes. What's yes. the what's the status on this? So what can can one say uh, about uh, yes. L1? They before must, before I waited the space. yes, it was proved for at least for second order derivative and expansion f in a local Hardy space because um, what the Hardy local space has the good property that if you multiply it by a good function, they are still in H one, and so when you consider operator of these types. Multiplication is it still in H1? So if you consider the H1, okay, it's not suitable for these problems because this, this is not necessary in H1. So it was shown that for a function, a, a function because it's not P in general, for P equal to one, we have function, not distributions. So for um, this equation is uh, you can prove the uniqueness, the solvability, and the a priori estimate. And this was shown, shown by some Chinese people that I don't know who they are. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I don't remember the name. Okay. Now you're looking to investigating some mm -hmm. of these or uh, some places. more general operators or some uh, weighted spaces. Uh huh. Yes. Okay. Nice. Any other question <clears throat> or comment? I have a small question. Maybe I don't know if, if it has sense. But at the beginning, you mentioned that you work with elliptic operators and that the coefficients, the matrix of the coefficient, is symmetric. Like the A I J, it's mm -hmm. symmetric. But could we also consider the non-symmetric case, or it they are a standard condition for elliptic equation? That's the when you say that something is elliptic, you mm -hmm. consider some standard condition that, that is included in the elliptic equation. Ah, okay. No, I just asked because no, 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 you know, some okay. other problems that work with, with kind of rough domains. Okay. Uh, sometimes they include non or non-symmetric ah, okay. So I thought that maybe. Uh, do it for something special. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Any other question or comment? If not, uh, let's thank Eugenia uh, again. Okay. Okay. Stop recording. Okay. Stop recording. Stop recording. Stop recording.